What's up skeptics, Thomas Westbrook here. Because there are so many natural phenomena that are easily misattributed to the paranormal and people think that they see ghosts or experience a haunting all the time, I put together a list of five things commonly mistaken for ghosts or demons to help you overcome potential fears. But that list wasn't comprehensive or nearly long enough. So this is part two. I'll link to part one below, but here are five more things that are commonly mistaken for ghosts. Number one, the ghost frequency. Back when I worked in IT, I was the youngest person at my job. I would regularly have business meetings and I didn't want to embarrass myself by forgetting to put my phone on silent. I knew that sounds could go really high pitched and super low pitched, but the human ear can only detect sounds within a certain range. And the parts of our ear that detect high frequency sounds are the first to go as we age. So I set my phone ringtone to a super high pitched 19,000 Hertz. And when it did eventually go off in a meeting, I was the only one who could hear it. By the same token, our ears can't detect super low frequency sounds below about 20 hertz, but that doesn't mean that our bodies can't detect them. In the 1980s, a British lab technician named Vic Tandy was working in a lab which his co-workers had claimed was haunted. Before long, Tandy began to experience a sense of dread. Breaking into a cold sweat, he felt his anxiety and depression spike and could tell he wasn't alone in the room. In the corner of his eye, Tandy noticed a dark figure moving, but when he spun to look at it, nothing was there. Tandy was a science-loving skeptic. As an engineer, he began investigating his lab for anything out of the ordinary. The hunt was on. Using his instruments, he discovered that there was a low-frequency sound coming from a nearby fan, which was just low enough to be outside of the range of human hearing, but which oscillated at the resonant frequency of the human eyeball, causing the eye to vibrate, triggering hallucinations. Further studies revealed that this sound frequency, specifically 18.9 Hz, can cause feelings of dread, depression, anxiety, and hallucinations. Some other sources of low-frequency infrasound like this include earthquakes, volcanoes, and other natural disasters. So it's understandable that it might trigger a feeling of unease. Number two, toxic chemicals. Most people are at least vaguely aware of the mood altering and hallucinogenic properties of psychedelic drugs like mushrooms or LSD, but oftentimes don't realize that old buildings and books can contain mold or fungal spores, which can potentially trigger feelings of dread, anxiety, and even cause people to hallucinate or to have experiences that feel supernatural or paranormal. Which may explain why old, moldy, poorly ventilated, overgrown houses are often thought to be haunted. But even brand new homes can have gas leaks from your oven, hot water heater, dryer, or other gas appliances. And something like a carbon monoxide leak can make you feel like you're not alone, fill you with dread, and even give you a sensation of pressure on your chest like something is trying to suffocate you. Other chemicals like formaldehyde and pesticides have been reported to have similar effects. The chemicals around you are mostly invisible to the naked eye and are often without smell or taste, but can still affect your brain in really wild ways. Number three, deliberate hoaxes and frauds. While this one seems obvious, I want to point out just how often people make hoaxes, sometimes extremely elaborate ones. Whether they do it as a prank, a joke for publicity and money, or just to see if anyone will believe it, hoaxers have been spinning their webs for as long as deception has existed. I literally have an entire series explaining the hot reading and cold reading tricks that psychic medium con artists employ as they prey on the bereaved while claiming they can talk to the dead. But as far as hoax photos and videos go, people have been creating elaborate hoaxes using double exposures, cardboard cutouts, lighting and perspective tricks, optical illusions, and even directly tampering with film negatives for as long as cameras have existed. But with the advent of Photoshop and After Effects, it's only gotten easier. Which one of these is completely 3D? I guess number three. Number two, uh, number one is the CGI Apple. And yet photorealism, while it can be done, as many Hollywood ghost movies have demonstrated, is tricky and difficult, and edits often leave traces of alteration. So many hoaxers mask imperfections with motion blur and camera shake and export their footage as low resolution screen sludge. Which is why, despite everyone and their mom having HD cameras attached to the phones in their pockets, for the better part of the decade, most hoaxes still look 
like they were filmed on a Russian potato. That said, there are physical hoaxes filmed in HD which don't necessarily need to rely on video editing at all. While not every ghost encounter is a deliberate hoax, this is something you should be conscious about the next time someone shows you a ghost video. Number 4. Natural Noises it's more than a little unnerving to know you're home alone and suddenly hear a noise in the other room. But I have a challenge for you. In your house, right now, can you name off the top of your head everything that makes noise? Think about it. The air conditioner or heater switching off, on, and blowing air. Your fridge. The microwave. Even the metal in your oven expanding and contracting as it heats and cools. Bathroom, bedroom, and stovetop fans. Computer fans. Dehumidifiers. Toilet bowls filling and shutting off. Your washer and dryer. The dishwasher. Toasters. Coffee pots. Even some modems and wireless routers make noise. Printers entering a cleaning cycle or switching to power saving mode. TVs, radios, phones, and tablets, and other electronic devices. The walls creaking in the wind or or shifting slightly due to thermal expansion, creaking water pipes, wind chimes, the house itself slowly settling into its foundation, neighbors above, below, or beside you if you live in an apartment, objects like window blinds blowing in the wind due to a door or a window being left open, whistling holes in the wall due to poor insulation, a rocking chair on your porch, squirrels on the roof, mice or rats in the walls, birds in the chimney, possums, raccoons, and other animals under or around the house, pets roaming inside the house, your hot water heater switching on and off, even leaves and petals falling off of potted plants, dripping water faucets, and so many other things. Sound is weird and unintuitive. Some sounds travel through walls, others get trapped and absorbed. Some sounds bounce around and are reflected off of walls in a way that makes them sound like they're coming from somewhere that they're not. We live in a very noisy world, so by necessity we've learned to tune out most of these noises to maintain our sanity. But when we're home alone or primed to think a house is haunted through the power of suggestion, then we notice every pin drop. And that's not to mention all of the wild animals you hear at night, depending on where you live, that sound like terrifying ghosts and monsters. <coughs> Number 5. The Displacement of Objects in Unstable Equilibrium A stationary marble in the middle of a bowl is in a state of stable equilibrium. I can apply a force to that marble and move it up the side of the bowl, but as soon as I remove that force, it rolls back to where it was. By contrast, a marble balanced on the tip of a pin is in a state of unstable equilibrium, because the slightest force will cause it to accelerate away from its initial position of equilibrium. Throughout the year, thousands of objects around your house are placed in a state of unstable equilibrium. Books hanging partially off a dresser, clothes slung over the back of a chair, pans resting precariously at an angle in the cabinet. Sometimes an object's center of gravity is right on the edge of whatever it's resting on, and even the tiniest change in air pressure or room temperature can be enough to cause the object to come crashing to the floor. Other times an object is on a slope, and the force of gravity on the object is just barely balanced out by the maximum force of friction of the surface the object is resting on. In this precarious state, even so much as the floor tremors from the people walking in another room may be enough to dislodge the object and cause it to come crashing or rolling down. Objects fall seemingly on their own, but only because they were precariously balanced in a state of unstable equilibrium. This is also why ghost cabinets and doors seem to pop open on their own, but amazingly become unhaunted when you tighten the screws ever so slightly or if you barely bend the metal rod in one of the door hinges. Now combine this simple knowledge of physics with the psychological understanding that humans have a bad tendency of applying agency to objects and events even if there was no conscious causal force behind them, and you start to see how imaginary poltergeists are able to steal credit from gravity. Bonus round, sleep paralysis. If you've ever woken up in the middle of the night paralyzed and felt sheer horror and fear, possibly seeing a dark figure, hearing noises and feeling pressure on your chest, you may have experienced sleep paralysis, which is an extremely common natural phenomenon that happens to about 40% of people at least once in their lifetime. I don't really have time to go into the science of it here, but I did make an entire video just on sleep paralysis, which I'll link to in the description below. 
Now, this is still hardly a complete list. And if I missed anything, please let me know in the comments below. There are many more things that people often falsely attribute to ghosts, and I'll have to cover this more in the future. But for now, know that just because you may not be aware of how something in the natural world works, and something may be a mystery to you, that doesn't mean that someone else doesn't know or that the mystery can't be solved. It just means you don't know yet. Could there be ghosts living outside the body after they die? I don't see how it would be possible, and the evidence for it is shoddy at best, but I'm still open to the idea. With the caveat that extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence. A quote by Carl Sagan, the author of the fantastic book The Demon Haunted World, which I'll be giving away a free copy of with a personal note from me inside to one of you lucky dogs. This book is an excellent primer on scientific skepticism and explains all kinds of phenomenon from paranormal weird stuff to supernatural occurrences. All you have to do to enter for a chance to win is follow me on Twitter at Holy Kool Aid and then tweet out a link to this video with the hashtag paranormal explained. This book competition is proudly sponsored by one of my patrons, Anthony Guthrie. If this video helped you make more sense of the world and possibly even helped you overcome an irrational fear of the paranormal, or if you just enjoy my work, please consider sharing this with your friends and family. And if you want to go a step further and help me in my mission to spread scientific skepticism and critical thinking, you can support my videos on a per episode basis on patreon.com slash holy kool aid with a monthly pledge on Subscribestar or with a one-time PayPal donation. Holy Kool-Aid is almost entirely fan funded, so even a couple bucks goes a long way. Thank you so much for your support, and as always, dare to be curious, but don't drink the Kool-Aid.